This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time! Oh, no. Oh, yeah! I finished these fights. Give me a hell yeah! Top Rope Nation. Learn to love it! It's the best thing going today. What's up, wrestling fans? This is episode 48 of the Top Rope Nation podcast, and holy hell do we have a lot to talk about tonight. It is Wednesday night as we record this. The NXT tapings are going on, and a lot of news is broke, so I think we're going to be one of the first podcasts to break it all down for you. I am Ryan Drosty of popculture.com, joined here by Kyle Ross and Justin Joint, and in the next hour... I have quite the list of topics to talk about, guys. It seems like in the last 30 minutes, I've just been adding more and more to the list. Kyle, what's your Wednesday night looking like tonight? How's it going over there in Cleveland? I'm covered in cords and scotch right now. so <laughs> That's how we like it. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing 50% good, I guess. What, what a ordeal this was getting set up. The last two weeks, I woke up my baby girl, so I decided to take the laptop and everything else down here into the basement and it was it was a pain to set up plus i had foot surgery last week i don't know if i mentioned that so i was hobbling like bret hart at the 94 rumble just to uh, get set up down here but i'm feeling good now yep, i'm about halfway done with this scotch actually <laughs> a little bit more than halfway uh, so we shall see seems like yeah the last two weeks since we've got the podcast going again this is our third episode since we've been back there's been a technical problem every week uh and this week it was justin's turn so justin's actually calling in via cell phone right now uh if you have a windows computer you know those uh updates that go through once in a while well justin's has been on about nine percent for about the last half hour so he is calling in to the top rope nation podcast hotline tonight justin what is going on man what a shit show of a day it's been first uh, you know i'm trying to put my son son down so we can uh podcast and He's about to fall asleep, and then he decides to take a giant dump. So we start from scratch there. <laughs> you know, the thing with the laptop is we're at seventeen percent right now, and then and then my beloved Tottenham Hotspurs got eliminated from Champions League today. So I'm I'm ready to talk some wrestling and just forget about this day. <laughs> is there anything worse than a kid taking a dump in a onesie just as you're putting him down to bed, or as you get him out of bed? Either way, you guys know what I'm talking about. Nothing. You know who would love, you know who would, you know, no, I was going to say, you know, I didn't know if Justin was going to respond, but you know who would love jokes about babies pooping in onesies? Uh, Vince McMahon? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> He's going to take a shit. He's going to shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man guys we were talking earlier today and this list is just grown by leaps and bounds i thought we were gonna Jesus. lead <laughs> we were gonna lead with the roman reigns uh steroid scandal at one point today um we were talking about fast lane we we're talking about uh the cruiserweight tag titles and then as we're getting ready to record tonight as these nxt tapings are going on we see that Number one, they unveil a new championship, the North American title. Um, and then the NXT TakeOver car just got shaken all to hell. Kyle's going to be at that show um, in New Orleans where us three will convene here in a few weeks. Uh, Justin and I will be at Ring of Honor Supercard that night. But, man, Kyle, you're going to get a hell of a show. What are your thoughts? Yeah, by the way, I also, I also have some other breaking news tonight. What's that? Just in. Just in. Uh, Brad Shepard is reporting the sun will come up tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, there's our weekly Brad Shepard reference. I love it. Yeah. So, um, no, this card looks real good. I, I, although I don't know the tapings as we just started, you know, peel back the curtain here as we just started to record. I think the tapings have ended and I'm not sure if there's a fifth match for takeover. I don't know. Or, or if there's more tape you know shame on me for not knowing i don't know if there's more tapings between now and uh, mania but um they taped a lot tonight so i don't know if they're going to do anything with johnny and tomaso or what but uh, obviously the big news was the creation of the north american title and uh 
because there's going to be a six-way ladder match with some big names in it. And then the the tag title match got set, too, with the kind of a uh, crazy finish in the Dusty Classic, and we're going to have a three-way for the tag belts and some injury news, too. So, yeah. Justin, when you hear about this North American title, what are your thoughts? Uh, my initial thought was just it, it, kind of a generic uh, name for it. it didn't, you know, they didn't seem to go uh, very far as you know, being creative with that. But uh, I'm kind of torn. They they have the depth for a secondary title, but. Um, I don't know. I don't, it just kind of made the NXT title more special because it was the only singles title, you know, for the men. So I don't know. I mean, I, I love, uh, championship belts, you know, just from looks alone. So I'm, I'm in it in that stand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of torn on it. Um, I'll give my thoughts in a second, but Kyle, what, what were you thinking? Well, I'm not surprised that they created a secondary title. I thought it was only a matter of time. Whether or not you agree with that, it was just a matter of time. I mean, there's such a log jam in NXT. NXT, it's so interesting how it's... What it is now, I'm not sure, is what it was intended to be. Because there's they're bringing in so much independent talent that, you know, Justin hinted on it. I mean, there's just a lot of people on this brand now. And there's almost a need for it. And and given the way WWE books, you know, it just makes sense to have a secondary title. It, it kind of lends itself to lazy booking because now when you look at it, every takeover card, okay, if they're going to be five matches, well, you got four title matches. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I always kind of liked that one singles match on the takeover card that wasn't a title match, but, um, looking at the participants, I mean, this match could tear the house down. It could be the match of the night match of the weekend. I don't know. Um, but you know, well, you it's know, you go bringing ahead. up, you know, the, you bringing up how it's you know normally five matches, and that's a good point. Like they're all basically going to be title matches now. Is actually my my second thought when I heard about the title was that I, I think we're going to be heading to three hour NXT special soon. Yeah, and I, I yeah I can see that because two hours always leaves you wanting more, but it's just inevitable. I mean, <laughs> that they're going to go three hours. I mean, especially with the amount of... T- it's going to be interesting to see who, they get, who, they, who gets called up post-Mania, too. Yeah, they, they've been going over two hours by quite a bit recently, haven't they? Haven't they been yeah. going like two and a half? Yeah, yeah and, it, and it feels right. Yeah, um, yeah, about, I wouldn't know if it's two and a half, but, um, you know, it's, it, they've, yeah, they, they're not held. Obviously, you know, that's the one advantage to having the network instead of pay-per-views. You can just kind of go over the, the limit, so the yeah. two-hour mark. But yeah, yeah we, I guess we should talk about you know the the guys that are in the match because uh, you know two really big names, uh, you know EC3 and Ricochet are going to be in there. Uh, EC3 sort of I guess he technically debuted. He made an appearance at the last takeover, but he showed up had a confrontation with William Regal at the tapings tonight, and that's when Regal you know had announced that there would be a North American title, that EC3 would be in it, Ricochet will be in it. Velveteen Dream will be in it, Killian Dane, Lars Sullivan, and Adam Cole is yeah. your lineup in a ladder match for yeah. the, the North American title, which, by the way, it'll be interesting if they try to hitch any lineage to the old North American title, the WWF. They probably won't, but, um, you know, I actually just watched some All-Star Wrestling earlier this week with Ted DiBiase holding the North American title. Something tells me that will not be mentioned. Probably not. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, or mid south for that matter. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of torn. I mean, even, obviously, like you said, that match is going to absolutely tear the house down. It's going to be awesome. I I kind of wish I was going to the show now, but Ring of Honor is going to be a really really good card. Um, I'm a huge fan of Ricochet. I've talked about him on the show here before. In fact, when we first launched this podcast, Ricochet, uh, I had attempted to get him as one of our first guests, and I failed. But uh, <laughs> You blew it, Hector. <laughs> I blew it, but uh, he was a cool dude. I had a chance to talk to him a little bit uh, when we started the show, and uh, I'm glad to see him in WWE finally. That Lucha Underground contract really kind of held him hostage for a while, and I don't know. I would pro- I would probably put this belt on him right off 
right off the bat. I think he's a special talent. I don't think there's a lot of guys that can do what he does. Um, but as far as adding the title goes, I one of the things I like about NXT so much is that it does have that old school feel. Like you got your world champion, you got your tag champions, you got your women's title, and that's it. And I kind of agree with uh, what Kyle was saying, how it's going to be harder for you to get a, a you know a non-title singles match now on the takeover cards, uh, or well, or, like or many, yeah, or several of them, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it just lends itself to the way they book. Yeah, I mean, it's it certainly with the main roster. When we talk about WrestleMania, I'm sure later in the show, I mean, there's going to be title matches out the ass on that, and it's just you know, well, okay, it's a title match. You know, they don't really do feuds anymore. Like they don't do with where there's like a personal issue or something. I mean, they, I get, they, I guess they can, but um, they generally do title programs. So, and you know, <laughs> this isn't even the only new title be- reportedly created. Well, we know this one's for sure. But there's the Cruiserweight Tag Team titles allegedly being created for 205 Live that was announced earlier today. That one I see is more needless yeah. than a secondary title for NXT. NXT, given how much talent is there, I can see the secondary title. 205 Live, I know it's just get you know, they've kind of reinvented it. There's good wrestling on the show. I don't know if there's a need for you know a second title on that brand. Yeah, I would agree. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that I'm entirely against it. Like, I, I understand why they did it. Um, I do worry a little bit about things getting too congested with too many titles. Uh, could you make the argument they already have a mid card title with the UK title? Yeah, but you know, that UK thing is uh, interesting, isn't it? It really never got off the ground. And while it gave us Pete Dunne, Tyler Bate, uh, gave us probably the best WWF match of WWF WWE match of 2017. Absolutely, that was my favorite match. Of there the year. really isn't like a division per se. Like you know, I don't see them. You know, there's the talks of them having a UK only TV show have completely stalled to the point they're just not existent. I don't even know if it's going to happen anymore. Yeah, last I heard, no, it was like a cost cutting measure that they had to push it back. Yeah, I mean that UK tournament you know, cost them money and, you know, okay, we got Pete Dunn out of the deal, but that's pretty much it. Uh, You know, and I mean, okay, I guess you can have him defending it uh, against people, you know, but uh, I don't know. I I don't know if they're going to get rid of it or what. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm pumped, by the way, to go to the Progress show, WrestleMania weekend. Progress is an awesome promotion, and the the indie scene in the UK is really great right now. So I think they were on the right track to make that show, and it's just kind of a shame that they haven't been able to get off the ground, because if they could have launched that right after the UK title tournament, I think it would have had a chance, but now it's so late. I just don't know if it would work. Um, and. Well- the fans in the UK just have so much right now with, you know, progress and ICW or whoever that uh, it is. It's a crowded market over there. Well, remember, too, that there was rumors that World of Sport was starting back up. Right. And then once that died, WWE seemed to have zero interest in do it launching their own UK, UK TV show. Yeah. That's the key. So I did want to read um, right before we went on on air. I tweeted out on our Twitter account at Top Rope Pod. Uh, for some of our listeners to give us their thoughts on the new NXT title that was announced. So I'm going to read some of them on air. Uh, follower Aaron James said, I love it. They've needed a mid-card title for a while now. Kind of along the lines of what we said. Uh, our buddy Derek Schropel over there from the Oversell podcast says, Great move. NXT knows how to use their champions correctly. Uh, we've got uh, former top rope press writer and actually originally he was on this podcast jason stout he replied and said you're almost to the point of too many titles one of the things that makes nxt great is that it's supposed to have that small promotion feel a champion tag champs and a women's champion secondary title sort of devalues nxt title here it almost gives it a tna feel when they introduced the the legends global and tv championship then did away with it for the Grand Championship. They end up just being there. There's no prestige to them or the guy who carries it. And then... yeah, I think that's going a little far. <laughs> we can come back to that one. Uh, to compare TNA, come on. 
And then we've got 3G on Twitter. He says, he's responding to Jason. He says, plus it's a one-hour show and the UK title is also used. So five males with championships if you count both tag titles or both tag champs on a 60-minute show is a bit eh. I wonder if they're going to merge the North American and the UK title. I really do. Because that's an, a good point with the UK title. They could have just made that their secondary title already. I mean, because there was no place for Pete Dunne to really work, except NXT. Mm-hmm. Um, now, it's interesting, too. By the way, we should have probably... You, you, you know how those anti-spoiler crowd types can get sometimes? We should have prefaced oh, it. I guess, I guess we kind of did. But, uh, you know, more spoilers, I guess, if you, I guess if <laughs> you hate spoilers, you've already th- thrown your computer and are cursing our names. But, These you know, Pete guys. Dunne, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pete Dunne is working in the tag title match on TakeOver now. Right, and that so that's interesting uh, because they had announced Adam Cole for the ladder match just a few minutes earlier, and then at the same tapings, Adam Cole is added to this triple threat, triple threat tag title match. So now the big talk is why would they announce Adam Cole for the ladder match and then put him in the tag title match for TakeOver just a little bit later at the same tapings? What the heck is Adam Cole going to do? What? Justin, do you want to see Adam Cole work twice in NXT TakeOver? Yeah, more Adam Cole, the better. <laughs> well, I don't know about put him, that. Put him in the title match. <laughs> so here's the thing, though. If people haven't been following, Bobby Fish got hurt over the weekend. And so Cole is working the tag title picture out of necessity with O'Reilly because, as we know, it was supposed to be the Dusty Classic winner against Undisputed for the tag titles at TakeOver. Fish got hurt, and rather than strip them, I guess they're just going to have Cole and O'Reilly defend the tag titles. And then they did an angle where they interrupted the Dusty Classic Finals, which was AOP and Pete Dunne and Roddy Strong, and now it's going to be a three-way at TakeOver with Undisputed, AOP, and Strong and uh, Dunne, which is an interesting matchup. Yeah. Because it kind of, I guess, cancels the idea that AOP would challenge the bar for the Raw Tag Team titles, which was my, which I, I you know, I'm not alone, was my idea um, for a topic we're going to have later. Mm-hmm. I don't. I think this is the most NXT talk we've ever had on a show, guys. We're almost 20 minutes in, and here we go. NXT is just tearing it up right now. Justin, the other interesting thing about uh, Strong being in that tag title match is he's also currently in the 205 Live. Yeah, that's that's true. On the mania card. Yeah, and does that tip their hand that he's losing to Cedric Alexander in the semifinals? Because that one I saw as a toss-up. You know, I, I'm pretty sure Mustafa Ali's beating Drew Gulak in the one semifinal. I could be wrong. But uh, that's who I'd bet on, them putting in, in that half of the final. Uh, so, I don't know. It could be... It, we shall see. I mean, he could work twice in a weekend, and AOP could work twice in the weekend if they make him like a mystery team or something like that, um, you know, against the bar. Every week lately, you guys talk about this 205 Live tournament. I always think after we record, I'm going to go turn it on and catch up. You guys are raving about it. I still have not seen a minute of this tournament. If you love good wrestling matches with no crowd heat, then 205 Live is the show for you. I feel terrible <laughs> for those guys, man, because they're working their ass off in front of people who are just leaving the building. No one's making a reaction. Like, last night, I don't know if you watched Justin, but you could hear a guy, like a singular guy yelling, go, pack, go, and boring. Like, I felt horrible for these guys. They deserve That's probably so that same better. asshole that was screaming in the AJ Styles promo during SmackDown. Green Bay, yeah. I am sorry. You guys have the worst wrestling crowds. <laughs> oh, man. You know, yeah, they've really got to move that before SmackDown. Yeah, it's it's mind boggling. They haven't done could that yet. Do it? Could you still do it? Like, I, and I get that. Well, we want it live. I mean, is it that? Would there be any kind of detriment? Here's a topic. Would two hundred five live being live on the network at seven o'clock be in any way detrimental as opposed to ten o'clock? No, absolutely not. I mean, I guess maybe. West Coast, I guess, but I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I, I mean, even to me, my thought is, we'll just tape it, you know, at seven, and then show it on the network at ten. Well, then they lose the whole, you know, they love being live. Okay, well, then I just thought, 
tape, you just do it live at seven o'clock. It's so ridiculous. I mean, like the best years of SmackDown, it was a taped show. Like nobody, nobody cares if you have a good product and it's tape. It doesn't matter. I, I will say it may be a little different in the year 2018 than it was because of spoilers or. Just yeah, I think spoilers do matter a little bit more in 2018 than they used to. Yeah, I don't know. It might make a little difference, but I mean, spoilers were really prevalent on the internet in the early 2000s. I mean, how long? When did SmackDown go live? It wasn't that long ago. Or maybe I'm just no, old and it doesn't feel that. No, way. no, it was. It's only been a couple of years. Yeah, it's only been a couple of years. So I mean, yeah, definitely SmackDown had lost its luster by then. But uh, I, I don't know. It is. It is odd, though. I, I can't believe that they haven't gone earlier because, yeah, it, it is. It would, Go ahead. And it would, it would just behoove everybody because, you know, the way those guys work, hey, if that's the first match you're seeing when you're sitting down in your seat, it's good. It's a good way to get you in. But if it's, you know, and given SmackDown, the way that brand's been booked recently, I mean, the last thing you want to do is see a bunch of guys that maybe, you know, the average wrestling fan doesn't know. You're not going to stay for that after, you know, sitting through SmackDown. Mm -hmm. It's also odd because this is not the WWE playbook. Like, they've always, when they've taped multiple shows at tapings, they've always done them before the show. You know, back in the day when they did Sunday Night Heat and all the other shows, Superstars, what have you. Yeah. They were always yeah, before. That's very true. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I just... Man, after Mania, they got to do that. I mean, there just isn't anybody who doesn't think that to me. At least that's smart. That's just saying that. Yeah. I mean, it's just just the the these guys are dying out there having good matches. I mean, even before the tournament started, the matches were good. The show was good, but there's just no crowd heat, and it hurts the matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna. I I am actually gonna catch up at some point because this is you know this is the wrestling style I like to watch. I need to see it. It's just it's so it just comes at the tail end of so much wrestling product. You get through the weekend, you get through Monday, you get through Tuesday, and it's like the last thing. And then well, then you, I guess you have NXT the next night too. Oh, there's so much out there. It's hard. Well, to you're keep reviewing up. SmackDown, aren't you? Unfortunately, I I have been reviewing SmackDown on pop okay, culture. Well. Yeah. Unfortunately, the problem is the best stuff on Tuesday is Mixed Match Challenge at 205 Live. <laughs> it's true. I started reviewing For SmackDown, popculture.com, uh, early August. And at that point, it was a really good show. And I try to be really positive. You know, I'm not trying to be a negative wrestling fan, regardless of what you might hear in this podcast sometimes. Like, I'm really trying to enjoy the positive aspects of the show. I've talked about this with my friends recently. And uh, SmackDown is making that really really hard and uh kyle you alluded two weeks ago to the writing team on smackdown most notably mr do, Brian do, James. Do, do, do. <laughs> yeah well, well yeah i mean it, it's i mean ever since he kind of you know became the head it went down the pooper man that's true I mean, man that it, show is so stale last night was just a slog to get through you had that aj it started match. out okay it started out okay but i just We'll get to our fast lane picks soon, but Jesus, I can't think of a show that I've looked for, especially a main event of a show I've looked forward to less. Yeah, well, we didn't even know it was the main event. Like AJ comes out, it's like barely past the top of the the uh, second hour, <laughs> and then then it turns into like the dry run for the six pack challenge without John Cena. Uh, I mean, it did start out okay, I will say, but then you have Randy Orton in the opening match, and then you kind of lose me. Not a lot of excitement there. Speaking of which, check out our archives. There is a show titled Top Rope Nation, the one where we bash Randy Orton. It's a good one. Last spring. I just feel that we watched every Randy or every Randy Orton Jinder Hall match was last night. You know, they like how many times have they done that same finish where like Randy kind of gets distracted, he eats the Coloss, and it's over. Throw the Singh brother on the table with no regard. Yeah, <laughs> like the same. Oh, well, that never gets old. That never gets old. <laughs> uh, guys, you know, I gotta say, I have failed at the hosting gig. I was so pumped tonight to talk about all this NXT news. I forgot to do the usual show open. By the way, if you're listening, we are now on Spotify, which is really awesome for us, opening up a new crowd. So you can check us out on Spotify. Leave us a rating on iTunes. As always, we are on Stitcher Radio. 
Uh, I'm trying to get us on TuneIn Radio. That hasn't gone through yet, though. Uh, <laughs> you can see us on Podbean, TopRopeNation.com, of course. Follow us at TopRopePod. And uh, yeah, pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. The Google Play Store, we're there, too. Uh, God, where do we want to go next here? Ray Mysterio? Want to talk a little Ray Mysterio and his injury? I have, a, I have a theory I'd like to throw out. All right, let's hear it, Kyle. And it was actually conf- so I wrote that to you guys, what, last night or this morning? I have a theory about this Rey Mysterio, Justin Barrasso article. Yeah, it was this morning. Okay, well, I've what I, my theory has only been confirmed. by. So Barrasso got an interview with Cena on Sports Illustrated. I don't know if you guys saw that earlier today. It was published. Mm-hmm. Do we think, and, you know, I'm not, you know, I mean, if I'm wrong, I guess I'm an asshole for suggesting this. But, you know, I'm an asshole anyway, so, but. And if the, if the guy, you know, whatever, man, hey, we're all making, trying to make a living. I, I'm not going to besmirch the guy if this is the case. Do you think that that Ray story was something he was doing working in concert with WWE to throw people off the scent of whatever they're doing with Cena, assuming it's Taker or whatever else? Justin, what do you think? Uh, I I would think it would be WWE intentionally giving him false information. I, I, don't, I doubt that they're like, hey, we're going to give you false information. You need to put it out there like it's real. I think there, it'd be more along the lines of he would assume it's good and it's not. Oh, but so he's just like kind of a stooge. Hey, we're going to tell this guy the wrong thing. And Well, so I don't know. See, to me, I think there's like some under the table handshake agreement here. Hmm. Like help us feed this story, which isn't really true. I think, don't a lot of people think uh, that uh, Barrasso is just kind of getting worked by the WWE? Like, he's had several stories that haven't really panned out in recent months. I don't know. I kind of lurk on some wrestling message boards. Okay. <laughs> and I, I see people bashing him all the time for being, like, wrong on stuff. I haven't I haven't followed his work closely enough to know if that's true or not. But, uh, but the, the Rey Mysterio he, thing always seemed a little off. He's getting a John Cena interview, though. So, yeah. like, there's... There, there's some sort of mutual thing going on here. Mm-hmm. And well, but that could easily just be like they know they're giving him bad information, and to kind of help him out, you know, here you can interview John Cena. Yeah, it, it just depends on how you want to look at it. Yeah, I, I just think he's kind of almost, whether it's wittingly or unwittingly, kind of working as an arm of WWE. I guess is my point. Yeah. And maybe we it all knew that. Be, maybe I'm just stating the obvious, but. It might just be blissful ignorance on his part. Yeah. He might know that he's probably getting bad information. But Dolph Ziggler ain't making a million and a half a year either, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, that was You're... his other recent yeah. story. That's right. Yeah. That was, what? Everyone's like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? Because uh, over the last week or so, WWE has kind of been on this trip where they've been bashing wrestling journalists. You guys? like, uh, and And a lot of the wrestlers have been too. Who was that that just got into the... The back and forth with uh, Bix and Span. Did you guys see? It? Did you see that? Corey Graves. Yeah, Corey, Corey Graves? Graves. That's right. Yeah, yeah. About yeah, like all oh, wrestling journalists. So it's not like a real like why why do wrestlers have this thing? Some wrestlers where it's like oh, wrestling journalism isn't a real thing. There are real people with journalism degrees writing about professional wrestling. Well, I'm one of I them. Mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, some people. I, I think the issue they have, and I've been the last to start deep diving into the Bruce Pritchard stuff, the podcast. And he obviously has a contempt for Meltzer. And it's really funny because like the one time that Conrad will say something that Meltzer was wrong about Pritchard will jump all over and how Meltzer's full of shit. But then like 90% of the show, if you listen, Pritchard is actually agreeing with Meltzer's opinions, which mm-hmm. is like kind of fun to listen to. <laughs> but um, I think it's just, they view it as, well, this stuff that isn't true, they're hearing, you know, secondhand and it gets reported as the gospel. Um, and, you know, they don't know that. And they're like, well, why don't they just, you know, call and confirm this? It's like, well, because you're not going to confirm it. So that's why. Um, I can see why. There are some people who don't do a good job, but there are other people who do a good job. And it is kind of silly. Yeah. So, so we're saying Brasso might be like their guy that they go to to. Well, he, to plant I, I think. I think he, um, yes, I believe he may join the immortal Sam Roberts and Peter Rosenberg among the co-opted <laughs> media. Oh man, those two! 
Yeah. Sam Roberts denied that he was getting the the gig with WWE because of an inside hookup for a long time, but uh, I think it's pretty clear that's the case. And, and uh, I don't, you know, I don't hate the guy. I no, mean, I don't know, but it's yeah. just odd that he would deny that's why he got the spot. Which it's obvious that's why he got the spot. Good for you. I mean, that's how that's how stuff gets done in any part of the business world, right? Like you get jobs through through contacts, and that's what he did. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. But uh, I, get, I think it was the fact that he denied it that people uh, that people didn't like. But if I was him, I would have done the exact same thing. Rosenberg, he's supposedly like I heard he pays them to get on the air. Like for publicity, I don't know if that's true or not. Someone was speculating about. Th- I've seen multiple people saying that WWE's getting a, WWE's getting a raw deal out of that. <laughs> I don't know. What the, I don't know what the true story is there. I, I just heard that relayed by a few different people. But uh, oh, you journalists! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. So Rey Mysterio is clearly not going to be wrestling John Cena. So Justin, your dream is alive for Taker and Cena. WrestleMania 34. How do you feel about that? Oh, please, sweet baby Jesus, let it happen. <laughs> See, Take another funny. drink of that scotch, buddy. It's going to happen. <laughs> I'm in that same position with wanting Gargano and Ciampa at the takeover. Like, that's the match, like, just because, like, I bought, like, my, these, you know, my group that's going to New Orleans, um, you know, these guys that I'm flying down with from Cleveland, you know, four of the guys are going to the Ring of Honor show where you guys will be at and me and my one real good buddy, we're going to take over and they're like, what the hell, man, you got to go to ring honor, man. I'm like, you know, I want, give me jo- uh, Johnny and Tommaso, man. That, that's all I want. And there's a chance. Maybe it's not going to happen now, but uh, man, I'm hoping cause there's, it only seems like there's four card matches set for that card. So I can't but, believe they wouldn't do that match. They have to do that match. <sighs> you know, I think they're going to say, remember there, there's a fifth takeover now in Chicago and that's where he turned on him. I think that's where it's going to happen. And who knows if Ciampa's ready to go, if he's been cleared, man, but Gargano is like one of the top faces of the company though, or the brand, I should say. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, interesting. This is one of the best stories they've told in a long time. I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to them dragging it out to Chicago. Maybe they just have a small interaction at, you know, New Orleans. And Johnny's got to beat all almost too. Mm-hmm. Eventually it's up. So that's true. But, you know, by the way, speaking of Andrade, let's check something else off our list here, our agenda, that I know you guys both got fired up about. (laughs) I know where you're going. Alberto Del Rio. Now, that's kind of a racist segue, I suppose. (laughs) uh, But hear me out. I don't think, I think it's smoke. I don't think there's a chance in hell Alberto Del Rio returns to WWE. But one of those reasons is, you got Andrade, Cien Almas down there. And with Zelina Vega, I just don't... Again, I know it's like, oh, you can't have two Mexican heels on the same brand. Okay. I, I guess maybe I'm being presumptive there. But, man, I, I just don't know if there's a need for Alberto De Rio in addition to all the baggage he brings, which is obvious. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm... The scotch I'm sipping on right now, it, it's Dewar's White Label, which also happens to be Vince McMahon's drink of choice. Oh, it is. I I don't know if it's the buzz from that, but I think you got to put uh, Alberto Del Rio over Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, AJ Styles. I mean, everybody. Just put him over everybody. <laughs> I, I think he's probably the greatest wrestler of all time. <laughs> See, Not only that, but a stand-up guy, too. Yeah. <laughs> we should provide some context, because people just see Vince McMahon interested in bringing Alberto Del Rio back, and they lose their minds. Del Rio was there for a Rey Mysterio DVD or something that they're going to do. And I guarantee what happened was, and this is why sometimes maybe they do get mad at wrestling journalists, Vince McMahon saw Alberto... And was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'd love to have you back sometime. And that got out as Vince McMahon wants back. And to be fair, Vince McMahon's vision of wrestling, Alberto Del Rio is is a guy he's going to gravitate to and give multiple chances, fair or unfair. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's Triple H who doesn't like it. Not Vince McMahon. Well, 
I don't think it's racist to to segue from Almas to to him just because of the their heritage, but uh, we it has been reported for a long time. Like WWE is looking for another Latino draw, right? And Del Rio usually works heel, but uh, he obviously wasn't the the star. He just never really caught on like they he's wanted. He's missing something. Yeah. I don't know what it is. You know, when people say he's got it, and you know, I hate that discussion. Yeah, but yeah. I will say that whatever it is. Del Rio is missing that. Yeah. I mean, he's a solid worker. He just has never felt special. Almas, especially with Zelina at his side, does feel special, I think. Like he is he is a guy that can grow in that market. And it's not it's not racist to talk about the the Latino market. It is a huge market share in uh WWE, especially in the South. I mean, they they do draw a lot of eyeballs from that community. And so they do want to start uh, to market to that community, and I think Almas is a much better option than Del Rio, for sure. And like you talked yeah. about, Del Rio has so much baggage. And then he's got his ex-girlfriend there, you know, Paige. Like, Paige needs that kind of drama around her right now. I No, I, I don't see it I mean, happening they, either. Yeah, and they could put him on different brands, I guess. But even so, that's kind of foul. And to kind of follow up on what you were just saying, they've done Ray versus Del Rio. That was Del Rio's first feud, if you remember. What was that, back in, like, 2010 or whatever? Yeah. If... If you want to recreate that Ray Eddie magic from SmackDown in 05, which by I mean that was a big mover on TV ratings in that mar- in the you know the Hispanic market. Ray and Almas seems like you know I like Ray kind of in the old gunslinger role, going against you know the hot up and comer Almas. Oh That's yeah, much intriguing than Ray Del Rio. Yeah. Oh yeah, Ray Almas would be awesome. I'm on board with that. No, I agree. Yeah, I don't think there's much to the to Del Rio rumors either. I don't see how they bring him back right now. I'd be stunned if he came back. Yeah. But it speaks to, you know, we t- we've been talking about NXT and all that stuff. And, and, you know, obviously a big talking point is that these guys come from NXT. They go to the main roster and, you know, maybe they're mishandled or whatever. There's a real disconnect, man, between Vince and Paul, I think, and the way they see things. Because Vince, I guarantee you, loves the idea that he sees a star in Alberto Duriel. Every time he walks by, Triple H don't like him. No, well, Triple H is right. <laughs> I gotta yeah, say. now Triple H isn't always right. No, like, he's you know, not. There's, there's this narrative. Oh, I can't. When Triple H takes over, it's the WWE will soar to new heights, and we need to check that certainly because there's some things that Vince is right on and Triple H isn't. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I'm, on Alberto Del Rio, Triple H is in the right. Uh. Speaking of rumors, do you want to talk about this Roman Reigns situation that's ongoing? Not really. I mean, this <laughs> this John Bravo video is, uh, you know, starting to be the boy that cried wolf. I yeah. Think. I mean, we could talk about it. I don't really think it's it's worthy of much discussion. I mean, we could. Well, I mean, what is it? I don't know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we we could end up looking like fools in a few weeks, and this turns into a massive story. But as of right now, journalists. It's nothing to talk about. Uh, there's not a lot of credibility to the story right now. There really isn't. Now maybe he'll come forward with uh, with something that'll that'll break, and they'll have to alter the WrestleMania card. That would be terrible, but it, you know it could happen. But uh, I don't think it's likely. And didn't he like delay the video he was gonna release or something this today? Didn't he announce that today? Yeah. yeah, it was supposed to be released today, and then it's been delayed because you know, quote, there's you know he just really wants to get this story right. Oh, God, of course. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. You're not doing much for uh, your reputation right there. No, I don't, I don't think there's much to talk about, but I know some of the, the Roman Reigns, the anti-Roman Reigns crowd probably wants us to talk about it. But uh, right now, yeah, not much to talk about. So uh, what should we go on to next? You guys want to talk about Raw or do you want to go right into fast lane? Justin, what do you want to do? Should probably do some predictions that you think yeah let's throw that out right now and then we'll hit some other topics in a little bit well can we just talk about one thing with raw yeah or i guess like raw going to mania because you know we talked about the top of the mania card a lot last week Mm -hmm. and you know just looking at the undercard who is challenging challenging the bar at wrestlemania is one of the more intriguing things they've got going because authors of pain to me was the slam dunk idea and i don't think it's happening you know pw insider reported quote it's going to be a team that isn't a team right now. Hmm. Who do we think that's going to be? And my God, am I scared to holy hell 
that it's going to be like Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt coming to some mutual understanding oh, after God. this. Um, <laughs> I really don't want it to be that. Somebody threw that out there, and I started cringing because I'm like, oh, that'd be so shitty. And I'm like, oh, God, it could happen. Because who else could I... Who else is kind of like not doing anything that you could see in that role? There, there really isn't anybody. I, I've racked my brain. I mean, they've got you know a ton of guys on SmackDown that are just kind of twiddling their thumbs. But when it comes to Raw, everyone's kind of accounted at, for. Yeah, and it really only if it really is two guys that aren't a team right now. The only two it could be. Is Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy, and frankly, I, I'm on the opposite. I'm still willing to give this a chance. Um, it's all going to depend on how this uh, Hardy compound fight goes. If you know, if they make that fun or at least interesting, and maybe some sort of weird ending where it's like a, a woken and broken connection, or you know, something going into WrestleMania. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm keeping an open mind for it. I saw the Young Bucks tweeted that they don't have anything going on April 8th. Now, it's never going to happen, but if they really wanted to <laughs> pop the crowd... I would love to see the bar against the Young Bucks. <laughs> well, only, so, only, only so that everyone can... Only so the mouth breathers can learn that the bar is the better tag team. hey <laughs> Oh, man. Cut, let's not go there. I don't know if I would agree. I'm not, I'm not going to... Oh, let me the tell you something. The bar is amazing. I think right now, you want a hot take that we can talk about on a later show? Go ahead. I think tag team champions right now, the Bar and the Usos, are among the five best teams in WWE history. Hmm. That is... Wow. I don't think I'd go that far. I think the Usos good. are the case for number one. Ooh. I think. Who's number one? The Usos, I think, have a case, a strong case as the number one tag team of all time. In WWF. They've never, never even been on WrestleMania. I know, which is... Uh, I like how they tied that in, by the way. We'll, I guess we'll talk about that with Fastlane. I like that. There's not a lot of subtlety going on on the blue brand compared to the red brand. Um, you know, real, real quick, um, going with this, the bar mystery match, I, I honestly, especially after the match on Raw, I, I would still like to see the bar in Revival. Yeah, have, that's... Have, a few matches. I, I think that could be really good. Yeah. The only so it was technically good, but the only issue is they're kind of similar teams. They're two. It's heel versus heel that like to work heat segments. And that match, man, let me tell you something. With this card, maybe ballooning to fourteen matches. That that's pretty. That's an easy pick for the pre-show. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well. It's obviously not going to happen. I brought it up because I thought the tweet was funny, but uh, they did pop the crowd with the Hardys return, who had wrestled, I believe, the night before at the Ring of Honor show. Mm-hmm. So why not bring in, if they really don't have anyone for them to wrestle, why not bring in the Young Bucks for a one match? They're not, contract? They're already stopped, but they're not going to do that. I know they're not going to do it, but why not? If they have well, nobody. Young, Buc- young Bucks are all in, man. They're not, in, they're not going to <laughs> wrestle, man. I know. I'm just saying. It, it would be pretty awesome. Uh, no, I, I like the Young Bucks. They are stars. People know them. The, uh, a mm-hmm. WrestleMania card, obviously the fans there would know them. Hardcore fans. But uh, no, it's it's not going to happen in a million years. So, yeah, we'll have to see. I, I do think it's it's pretty thin on the uh, the Raw tag team side. So, uh, let's yeah, let's do our Fastlane picks quick. Let's get that out of the way. Fastlane is... The stopgap pay-per-view on the road to WrestleMania, which did not... This this past week on SmackDown, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Not the most exciting show. Randy Orton in the first match after that women's segment, which started... The women's segment was not bad. I didn't mind that. I thought Ruby Riot for a new NXT call-up, did better than most NXT call-ups on the mic. Um, and then... Then it just that it was kind of an awkward transition. How like they're about to attack Charlotte, and then all of a sudden Bobby Roode comes out, and it was like the show wasn't timed right or something. Like here comes Bobby Roode, get out of the ring, and everyone knows nothing is going to stop a beatdown like someone's theme music and a dr- long drawn out entrance, and that's exactly what happened. So the women bailed. We never got another reference to him again. Bobby Roode does guest commentary, and then we got the aforementioned. 
Randy Orton, Jinder Mahal match that we saw 155 times last year. So SmackDown was not the best show this this week. We've got the run through of the six pack challenge without John Cena. Uh, let's see. Let's just run down the card. By the way, oh, I almost forgot. What is up with them not using Rusev like at all weekly? This guy is super over with the crowd. Are you shocked, Kyle, that they they never have Rusev on the show like doing anything of note? Am I shocked? No. Is it dumb? Yes. They were chanting for him at the Ring of Honor pay-per-view last weekend. If you get the Ring of Honor fans chanting for a WWE guy like that, they're doing, you know, he's he's over. He's definitely over, but they're doing nothing eh, with him. The prob- their problem is they get real stubborn. They have their ideas. They know what they want to do, I guess, believe it or not. And if something gets over organically that they didn't have planned, it's an odd thing. They kind of push back against it. Well, there's tons of examples of that over the years, too. I was talking about this uh, with my buddy over the weekend. So, yeah, you think of like, uh, well, Zack Ryder is a prime example. Zack Ryder got over to a level that many have never gotten over by themselves, too, with that whole. Uh, well, we need to be careful with the hyperbole because here's the thing. Those guys do get that following and they get hot. And the problem is WWE doesn't strike while the iron's hot. And then it just kind of goes away. Like, I don't think, like, Zack Ryder was not, you know. I think Zack Ryder, Zack Ryder could have been an upper mid card guy. Like, he, okay. he could have been an Intercontinental Champion. He could, he well, could he, honestly be where the Miz was is the right US now. the U.S. Champion, didn't even, they gave him the U.S. Yeah. title. Yeah, yeah he, he could be where the Miz is. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. He could be. He, what, right now? Yeah, if they would have actually followed up on all the all the the crowd momentum that he had built for months, I don't know. If I agree with Zach that. Ryder was getting huge crowd reactions on Raw week in and week out. It wasn't just like one card or one uh, one crowd. He was getting huge reactions, and they did everything they could to make him look like a geek. And then what was it? John Cena like stole his girlfriend. That was <laughs> a good book. That was not good booking. That yes, was there terrible. Was a of, they there, just buried him. There, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, it made me think of that because you said guys sometimes get over organically and they don't do anything with them. Cesaro is another good example. I mean, I know he is in the bar and you think they're the, the greatest of all time. But Cesaro, is, as a singles guy, was really over with the crowd for a long, long time and they didn't really do anything with him. Okay. Is it the anti reigns though, not to take the WWE's perspective? Uh, look, I, I think there's a lot of guys that they, you know, they, they have momentum on their own, and they need to ride it, and they don't. That, that's a problem with WWE. But do you think it's kind of like the anti reigns where, like, the the same people who love to boo Roman Reigns because he's being positioned as the top baby face and they don't want him there love cheering for guys being under that are under-pushed only because they're under-pushed? Like, do you think if... The crowd, if WWE gave the crowd what they wanted with a Zack Ryder, do you like what do you th- like? Would that momentum keep going, or would the crowd be like, oh, they're giving them to us? Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Yeah, like, like it's almost to me like guys get ch- like cheered for being under pushed, and that's the allure of it. We're just like the, there's an allure for booing Reigns. Who in their mind is over pushed, which is nonsense. Yeah, I think I think you could make that argument for some of them. I think Ryder's a little different because he was doing like the reality show thing. I think he just connected with the fans by doing that on YouTube. I mean that that uh, true Long Island story thing he was doing or whatever was hugely he, popular. He deserved a run. Like here's my thing: guys like him deserve. Let's see what they've really got. If it doesn't work, who cares? And just don't then go ahead and bury him. Now the obvious huge uh, counter argument to what I just said is Daniel Bryan, obviously, who was, you know, being, ch- although I would argue there was legitimate story every time the crowd was chanting his name where he should have been inserted higher on the card, mm-hmm. whether it be the build up to WrestleMania 30 or 30, which, you know, he obviously, you know, won the world title then or, or 31. Yeah. Yeah. You would agree, though, that they. They didn't utilize Ryder like they could have when he was hot. No, obviously not. No. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't give him the chance, and that one is mind-boggling to me because Ryder seems to have like everything they would want in the star. Like he has a good body, he has charisma, he's a good wrestler, 
He's not he's not like you could argue with Cesaro, he's really dull on promos, right? Zack Ryder's not. He has a ton of personality. And they didn't they just it was like they went out of their way to make him look like a geek right away. And you had crowds. It wasn't like I said, it wasn't one crowd. It was week after week people were chanting we want Ryder during random matches. He was he was really popular and they didn't do anything with him. So I Rusev is more talented than Zack Ryder. The they're both really talented i think russo's super talented too yeah and it is mind-boggling that he's in like these stupid backstage segments and not wrestling any matches week after week although he is going to wrestle nakamura this sunday so that should be a pretty good match odd pairing it is an odd pairing <laughs> it's like i threw him out there all right you get shinsuke because they they are reacting to you but I don't know. Let's go down the card. Um, so we've got Becky and Naomi taking on Natalia and Carmella. Winners, Justin, who's winning this match? Uh, bathroom break. <laughs> Carmella has lost a lot of steam since uh, winning the money in the bank, that's for sure. Should I be scared that she's going to cash in at WrestleMania? Yeah. Yeah. Because Actually, you know what? No, I, I take that back. No, because I think we're getting uh, the Queen versus the Empress of Tomorrow, and I, I just can't imagine they're gonna. Oh, this is the SmackDown there's no, man. But there's no way they fuck with. Do do do. Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh man, I I could look. Look at the way they had her win the money in the bank briefcase. I know you two, like, you know, were ready to call, you know, you know, the top women's rights attorneys in the country. Oh, I did. After. I did call them. You, you ought to have been, you were ashamed. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself for the way you reacted to that. Because let me tell you something. She had heat back then. Um, and I'll say this. If they want to give any heat to Carmella, I guess that's because she's dead in the water ever since James Ellsworth left. I mean, dead. They really needed, in retrospect, to have her cash in that thing right away. Because she is just dead in the water. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's because James Ellsworth, he had that Zack Ryder following. I mean, anytime you get rid of that. Well, it was, no, James Ellsworth was a good territorial era style heel. I like, I I miss James Ellsworth. I miss James Ellsworth. I have no idea who's going to win this match. Uh, it doesn't really matter who's going to win this match. I'll just go with Becky and Naomi, I guess. Yeah, I, I can see who, them redoing the match on Tuesday and 50-50 booking ensuing. Yeah. Uh, Usos and New Day, uh, it would appear we're maybe heading for a triple threat at WrestleMania with the Bludgeon Brothers thrown in. The Bludgeon Brothers have to be in the title match at Mania. It would appear. So... Da-da. Oh, no. Are you sure about that? <laughs> God, I hope so. Man, the Bludgeon Brothers are awesome. They have been one of the things I have most liked about SmackDown while reviewing it the last few months. And I'm going to say the Usos hang on to the titles here. Hmm. How do you justify the three-way then? Uh, I guess just the teases that they've that they've built up. Well, well, my thinking is they the Usos would lose and enact a rematch clause. Mm-hmm. You know, like if the Usos retain, how do you yeah. then justify the New Day being in a three way at Mania? That makes sense, and, unless they do like some kind of schmoz finish at Fastlane where well, the Bludgeons get involved. Yeah, you make a good point, Justin. I think you hit the nail on the head. I, I think we're going to see a Legend Brothers run in. Um, and I, I got to give credit to, once again, the, one of the best parts about WWE, the, the promo guys, is I was not excited about another Usos and New Day match, but the, the, the promo they had on SmackDown was really good. And, you know, yes. I'm, I'm ready for it again. Yeah. Usos and they... Uso's Uso's New Day was the best thing about SmackDown in 2017. The Usos are awesome. I I really love what they've done. I am ready for the new, the new day to break up. I think that's really run its course. I'm ready for Big E to get the singles push. 
Uh, but yeah, man, the Usos, they, I, it's, I think I tweeted it out a few days ago. It's hard to believe when you, when you look at them now versus like the neon color wearing fan favorites that it's like the same team. They've evolved so much and improved so much since then. Just the characters in general are a lot more entertaining now. They were always a good team. So my point earlier, but they're definitely more over now and the presentation's a lot better. Yeah. Their promos are excellent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. So we're going. So I predicted, a sh- I guess my official prediction would be like some kind of run and finish there. Kyle? I'll go New Day. Okay. Justin? Yeah. I'll go Uso. All right. Uh, Charlotte and Ruby Riot. So we talked about Ruby Riot, and uh, she has, I think, done a really good job as an NXT call up. There's no way she's going to win the title here, though, heading into <laughs> WrestleMania. So, Charlotte, obviously. Either yeah, you. Yeah. Zero chance Ruby Riot <laughs> wins here. Although I liked the segment on SmackDown, and, um, you know, to our discussion from a few weeks ago, the Riot squad's starting to catch on with me it's yeah i like some of the stuff they do on twitter and online i mean it's nice to see you know they're all friends you know that's nice to see yeah i wasn't i wasn't saying when we talked about that two weeks ago that like the absolution doesn't have um that made me think of something else i'll go there in a second i'm not saying absolution doesn't have a huge ceiling because they do i do i really do think mandy rose is going to be like one of the biggest women stars of this generation eventually Right now, I don't think she's quite ready. She's been a little green in the ring. And so all I was saying was that right at this moment, I said that the Riot Squad was a superior team because I think they're just a little more polished around the edges. Um, I think Mandy's going to be a megastar, though, eventually. Uh, So, yeah, I think I do think, and I'll give the SmackDown booking a little credit here, I think Ruby has um developed as a like a legitimate threat the way they've built this matchup so i don't think she's gonna lose a ton of steam by losing to charlotte here like i don't think she's gonna fall completely down the women's division i think she'll i think she's been she's legitimate i think moving forward so they've got a position where it's not like a extended squash and i think they're smart enough not to do that yeah you know um Remind me to come back to that absolution thing when we get done with this card, because that made me think of something else I wanted to talk about. Um, all right, so that one's pretty easy to call. And then Bobby Roode and Randy Orton, the match that Justin Join is looking forward to the most. Justin, who you got here? Um, oh, God, I fucking hate Randy Orton. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really hoping for a big, like, maybe a, a U.S. men's, ladder match at WrestleMania to get like to make sure that Ziggler's streak of not having a singles match continues. Um, so I'm going to go with Bobby Roode winning via heel turn. Okay. Kyle. Oh, okay. Well, that's not what um, the U S title is one of the components of WrestleMania. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing. You've got Jinder out there who's clearly in the picture and has beaten Randy Orton now on television. If it was me, I would have done a three-way here at Fastlane with Rude, Orton, and Mahal. Have Mahal eat the fi- uh, eat the fall and then just move on to a one-on-one match. But that's just me trying to avoid a ton of multi-person matches at Mania. You know, I, I to me... I know we're kind of, you know, we, we either fucking hate or just, you know, lukewarm on Randy Orton here on this podcast. But there is a cachet for someone like Bobby Roode beating him at a WrestleMania. I think that'd be a good win. And if, if Roode were to beat Orton one-on-one at Mania, I think that'd be very good. But obviously, I don't think they're doing that direction. I actually think they're doing the opposite of what I said. And I think Orton may win here. I think it's the same thing as the tag title match. I'm going to pick Orton to win, and it's going to be a three-way at Mania with Mahal. Hmm. So Orton is the U.S. champ heading in. Well, I'm just trying to think logically here yeah. to set up, which so you know can get you in trouble sometimes with these things. But if Orton wins here, okay, Mahal's going to say, "Well, I beat you last week." Mm-hmm. Rude's going to say, "Well, I have a rematch clause." That's the way they book. 
God damn. God damn it. You're right. You are you're right. I, I think that's I, gonna happen. <laughs> and I don't want to see Randy Orton with a belt, but I think it's gonna by happen. By the way, I have I talk about lukewarm. Bobby Roode on SmackDown. Not I don't dig you know, it's funny Justin alluded to him maybe doing a heel turn. I'd welcome that personally because him just saying he's glorious all the time and being this <laughs> hard baby face does not do it for me. He just does not come across as the star he did in NXT at all. No, he 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 needs a heel turn for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in in a promotion where I think so many heels need to turn face, he's a face that I think needs to be heel. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think you've sold me. I'm gonna go with Randy Orton too. Unfortunately. Da 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 da. <laughs> Uh, the next two matches are pretty damn easy to predict, so I kind of want to go a, a different angle with one of them. So I would assume we're all going to go with Nakamura over Rusev, correct? Yes. <laughs> Heading into WrestleMania. And then in do, the, do, do, do. the six pack challenge um, obviously, AJ Styles is going to retain. And uh, if you've seen, Oops. spoiler alert. John Cena is not booked on any SmackDowns between now and WrestleMania, so he's certainly not winning the WWE title and making that a triple threat. So since we would all agree Nakamura's winning and AJ's winning, what I want to go with is, does The Undertaker make a surprise appearance to start the build with John Cena? Or do they allude to that at all? Like, the lights go out, anything. What do you guys think? No, I think, it's gonna, I think it'll be a straight deal. You know, the only storyline that will come out of it will be whatever's going on with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. It'll be, hopefully, fingers crossed, AJ Styles winning, and then whatever's going on with that. Um, oh, AJ's a lot to win. I hope so. The John Cena thing's going to continue. That, that's that's going to be safe for television. They, they have a lot of television to fill, so that, that's where that's going to be. Mm -hmm. e there's another thing, too, that we need to talk about. This whole Shane McMahon, Daniel Bryan storyline that's been just dragging on and no one has any unearthly idea where it's going to lead. Like, what's the end game with that? Yeah, it's so awkward. Like, if they're not going to have Bryan wrestle, yeah, exactly. What is the end game? Like, what was it two it, weeks it, ago? Bryan's just like, oh, I just want to go home now. You got it under control. And then he wasn't there this week. So he's just like, <laughs> yeah, whatever, man. I'm heading home. I did see someone on Twitter, someone I like. Uh, who was it? It was Dylan Hales, who I like on Twitter. He has good comments about the sport of professional wrestling. Uh, he's like, is Daniel Bryan's character bored SmackDown fan? Which I think is really <laughs> funny because that's like kind of how he was acting. Like this show's terrible, and, and he just like eventually just leaves, which was kind of funny. But um, with Kevin and Sammy, I think it's, it seems like they might work against each other at Mania one on one. Mm -hmm. I'm actually kind of warm on that idea. Um, with Owens as a face, although no one's been calling for Kevin Owens to turn babyface more than me. Um, but Man, I, I don't. It'll be interesting because I think Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan are going to factor into this match too. It's not going to just be Kevin and Sammy as part of it, and then I think Shane and Daniel Bryan are going to have a role in this match too. Hmm. Okay. They, they've got to they've, they've got to do something because one of the most exciting moments in wrestling this year was Kevin Owens headbutting Vince McMahon. What a waste you know, that was in retrospect. It was, that's what I mean. And, and, you know, that leads into the Hell in a Cell match with this Ham Zane heel turn. It, it's all got to be going somewhere to pay off those great moments, which, you know, I'm not counting on that, but just wishful thinking. Uh, that, that's the problem with SmackDown. To be honest, that's when SmackDown really went downhill. Was that stuff? I mean, if... It, if the end game is Kevin Owens just turns babyface, and look, like I said, no one's been advocating that more than me. You guys can confirm that, okay? But what a waste of bringing Vince McMahon on television that was. Yeah. In all time waste to have that. I mean, this the Shane McMahon feud with Kevin Owens and then now Sami Zayn is one of the worst major feuds the WWF has ever done, in my opinion, in a main event position. 
So are you suggesting this could be a deal where like a uh, baby face Owens has Brian in his corner with Sammy versus like Shane in his corner kind of thing? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I mean, are they going to factor something in with Cena? I, I don't know. I, I, I just I do not know at all. I just I just don't get how they've run this storyline for so long where you have a heel team feuding with baby face authority figures. That's bad. Mm-hmm. Like and, and, and the heel team, no one wants to see them fired, which is like an issue. Yeah. Well, so, one uh, thing that we do know is it looks like Daniel Bryan's going to be leaving the company and wrestling elsewhere this fall because if he was actually wrestling at WrestleMania, don't you think we'd know by now? I mean, if not, if I not, mean, they've they've really done a hell of a well, job no. keeping this under wraps. He, He's not going to wrestle. They have too much stuff planned for WrestleMania um, to bring him back. But I don't think that it necessarily means he's leaving just because he's not going to be on Mania. Well, that was that know. was his, that was his own words. He said if he wasn't cleared for WrestleMania, he's gone. Well, then I guess maybe he is gone. Then. Unless I don't they know. promised him like a major, major match at the next show. Who knows? Yeah, go ahead, Justin. I, I was just going to say, uh, if Cody Rhodes and Young Bucks want to actually make that 10,000, uh, you know, crowd capacity, I, they better hope that Dan O'Brien's leaving. Yeah, well, the only thing that I, I, that's before, see, that was that was a key date when they announced that. Mm-hmm. That's his contract doesn't run out to when October. Yeah, I was thinking October. That shows in September. Yeah, yeah so he can't even do it. You yeah, know that, that, that's. Yeah, you know they're going to be pushing hard on the CM Punk thing though. Hmm. Yep. So, I did want to mention one more thing about Fastlane. I think Nakamura Rusev is atrocious matchmaking. Absolutely. <laughs> She's like, ah, oh, shit. Let's just throw these guys together. Whatever. Now, these are two of the best guys on your brand. It's it's not just that. I want to double back to your guy's point about Rusev. Okay, so you've got a guy who's kind of getting organically over, right? Mm-hmm. And you're gonna put him against the guy you're positioning as a top baby face. That's the last guy that Rusev should be working against. <laughs> You're right. Like, he's going to kill his heat. Yeah. But, well, because Rusev's, well, I don't know about kill his heat, but Rusev's not going to win. I mean, I guess the crowd will be into it, but, you know, the whole allure of Rusev is the crowd's getting into him. Mm-hmm. You know, they want him to be a baby face. Yeah. Well, he's not going to get cheered that much against Nakamura. Yeah. All so, I, I mean, ask I, is that they could just bring Rusev out on a tank once more. Do it again. One of my favorite WrestleMania moments of the last few years. No, <laughs> oh, that was great, yeah. But unfortunately, it's kind of been all downhill since then. Yeah. No, I agree. Terrible booking. It really has, actually, to be honest with you. It really has all been downhill since WrestleMania 31. Yeah. It's actually been, I mean, that when they got announced that engagement to TMZ, that's when it really, you know, they. I don't think they've forgiven them in the office for that, which is the silliest damn thing of all time. That's true. Um... Before we go, I did want to mention, I I said a a second ago about Absolution. So on last week's show, uh, I had told you guys, we were talking about Bailey. I pushed the clip on social media the other day, if you guys saw that. I'm trying trying to get like little snippets of our show out there. So maybe people that don't listen to the full show, like hear a little snippet and they think, hey, we're going to listen to these guys. Uh, Because I do think we have a really good podcast going here. So if you guys are listening, tell your friends, you know. Tell one or two people, check this show out. I think they'll like it. But I was, I think I sold you guys a little bit on the Bailey heel turn uh, idea, so you probably know where I'm going with this. Wouldn't Bailey be an awesome addition to Absolution? Now that Paige can't work. Fantasy booking alert. <laughs> I was just thinking about that watching Raw when they had the beatdown of her, and I still firmly believe Bailey should go heel. I was just thinking, man, Bailey as a heel with Absolution would be awesome. And they need if they want three people on the team, now that, that Paige can't wrestle, there you go. That's the perfect angle to take. Okay. Any I, thoughts? I, I, I tweeted it out, and obviously Bailey is surfer sting, and we need Crow Bailey. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. I really liked the subtlety. You know, we're, we didn't talk, spend a lot of time on Raw. I really like the subtlety they did with Sasha and Bailey in keeping that story going, and Seth Finn. Yes, I agree. 
Yeah. Those were done. I thought, I thought, you know, a lot of people I, I saw after Raw was over, eh, this was kind of the, one of the weaker Raws so far in 2018, and, and maybe it was. You know, certainly in-ring it was. But they know where they want to go for Mania, and you kind of have to have these shows now where it's just, you know, it's a lot of talking and, you know, kind of going deep into the angles. And, and you know, in the case of, of those two, you know, the, we don't get a lot of that um, through the years on WWE with, you know, subtlety in in undercard programs and that was welcomed for me mm-hmm. yeah i would agree that i see title match is going to be really really good i think miz is winning though given how they've booked it oh there's no way he's winning he's having a kid i think look they're beating him like a drum i mean granted you know there's still a few weeks to come but they've beaten him like a drum the last two weeks i, I was stunned he ate the fall in that two uh two on three match i mean i thought that's what axel and uh Dallas before, but he ate the fall there, and they're pimping this record, which is past mania. Mm-hmm. So I, I could see him retaining at mania, and then like losing to Balor at you know uh, whatever the the, the pay per view is after that payback or whatever. Yeah, I could see that. I think so, I, I think I would go with Balor right now, though. Oh, he needs a secondary title. Yeah, I've been. There's no doubt about that. He he's a guy who needs a secondary title. Yeah, I almost see this as a payoff for Finn. Like uh, you know, he got injured with the Universal Title. hasn't been haven't done much with him since. Uh, Rollins has had a WrestleMania moment. Miz has headlined WrestleMania. I I don't know. I th- I feel like this is going to be Balor's moment to win a title at WrestleMania. Mm. We'll see though. It is interesting. I can see that going several different ways. So we'll have plenty of time to talk about that in the coming weeks, though. That's for sure. So I think I think that's about all we got. Anything else you guys want to cover before we head out? No, I got to pee. <laughs> all right. The scotch has run through Justin, so we are ready to go. <laughs> all right. Again, guys, hey, if you enjoy the show, tell one of your wrestling fans. Tell two of them. Might as well. It's fat free. Tell three of them, my God. Just tell them. Uh, check us out on iTunes, subscribe. The more subscribers we have, even if you're not listening, if you subscribe, it helps us out. So subscribe on iTunes. Uh, go ahead and, uh, leave us a five-star rating on there. Like I said earlier, you can check us out on Spotify. We're on Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and of course, TopRopeNation.com for the full archive. And we will catch you guys next week. Next week.